My name is Georgina Pollard. I'm part of an artist collective called Kandos School of Cultural Adaptation. I was one of the eight artists who collaborated with farmers and scientists as part of a two-year project called An Artist, a Farmer and a Scientist Walk Into a Bar. I collaborated with Rui Anaya De La Rosa. He's a soil scientist who works with Adam Blakester on an initiative called Biochar for Sustainable Soils. It's an initiative that encourages the use of safe and economically viable production of biochar that meets environmental and ethical standards. My name is Rui Anaya De La Rosa. I am the project director of Biochar for Sustainable Soils. The project takes place in six countries, China, Ethiopia, Indonesia, Kenya, Vietnam and Peru. About 1,000 people have been involved. We have found great results. The biochar has helped to improve crop yields and reduce fertilizer use for farmers in these developing countries. Although the project is finishing this year, most partners will continue their biochar activities because they have seen benefits. Not only the organizations that we are financing, but also the farmers. So the farmers will continue even without funding, not only in the area of these six countries, but also incorporate other countries as well. So the way it works is biochar, the charcoal is porous, so it can be used as a sponge to retain water and nutrients in the soil. Rui and I collaborated on workshops where he would teach people how to make biochar using a contiki kiln. And the contiki kiln is an affordable, small-scale way of producing biochar from agricultural waste that is um, designed to reduce greenhouse gases while you're making the biochar. The angle of the sides of the kiln create a vortex that ensures the efficient burning of as much of the volatile gases as possible. Uh, once the process is underway, it's a fire without smoke and you can see the gases swirling back into the fire. I was very lucky to be invited by Rui and I, De La Rosa and Anna Blakester to create an artwork as part of their participation in the 2018 Australian New Zealand Biochar Conference. Uh, we came up with the long sleeve, an artwork devised in response to biochar as a method of carbon sequestration, as well as a means of improving the ability of soils to hold water and nutrients. These objects are now a form of carbon that is stable and can last hundreds of years in the soil, not only sequestering carbon, but also increasing the fertility of the land. Our partner on this project was The Living Classroom. Rick Hutton and I made biochar using a kiln made from a 40 gallon drum. We made charcoal pencils out of willow. We did some drawing games and I devised these based on children's games, Pin the Tail on the Donkey and uh, Musical Chairs. The music starts and you start to draw, the music stops, you race back to your chair. Two simple elements of the drawing are sequestering carbon, the paper and the charcoal. In these works, three things are going on carbon sequestration, collaboration and process, and all three reflect on biochar. Carbon sequestration is like the long-term storage of carbon. As we burn fossil fuels, we're releasing carbon into the atmosphere that has been stored underground for a millennia. This is known as like the long-term carbon cycle, and then the short-term carbon cycle is like trees and plants that are moving along in a much faster time scale. We can get some of that carbon back into the ground and improve the quality of soils to grow food at the same time. The incomprehensibly large scale problem of climate change is dependent on these tiny, tiny little atoms of carbon and tiny microorganisms. Carbon has become something of a, a demon carbon as a problem uh, in the framing of climate change and as we've been hearing in presentations today about how to restore carbon into soil systems adds to their fertility, their productivity, their resilience. We need to restore the health of the climate system and the way to do that is to work with the beneficial properties of carbon rather than just simply thinking we avoid it as a, as a problem. There's a wonderful quote by a scientist, uh, Gus Beth, who simply says, we thought solving the problem of climate change was a matter of looking at new technologies, new systems of organising society for food, for lifestyle, for transport, buildings and so on. But what we've realised is that this change actually is a change of culture. And we scientists, we don't know how to do that. Just having the knowledge is not enough. There's a change process required. And this is where it's exciting to be collaborating with artists, is how do we communicate, how do we support people for what is often scary to make change and stepping into uncertainty. So how do we make that safe as a very supportive space? How do we more readily let go of tradition and conventional practice to try something new? These are just some of the ways that I think artists can inspire and inform and enable 
this change process. When I used to think about climate change, I'd look up to the sky and think about the atmosphere, but now I'm looking under my feet. All I can think about is healing the land through rituals and artworks that think about the value of soil health, microbes and plants.